Hi guys, Ali Duzette here, and today I have a special guest, Seidel Schultz, who I just love. She is my colleague and one of my best friends, and so I wanted to talk to Seidel and get her take on this new transit of Saturn entering Pisces, which just happened. And so thank you for being here, Seidel. Uh, let's hear it. What do you think about Saturn entering Pisces? I think it's fantastic. Um, I'll be honest, I struggled with Saturn for a long time. In fact, I heard someone say once and kind of fell in love with it, Saturn equals Satan. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, it kind of feels like that because Saturn is can be really painful, but it, it, took a, it took a hot minute, I won't lie, but after a little bit, I was like, you know, I want to know the gift that Saturn brings and the gift that Saturn brings to me and to my life. And as I was like, um, just doing a session for myself, Saturn was like, I have a message for you. And there are some things that I wanna say to you. And what I just really received from Saturn was this love, like Saturn loves me and like wants me to not run faster than I have strength and wants me to make sure that I am ready to receive the things that I want to receive. And then you've got this great combination of um, this Pisces energy, which is so intuitive. And so to me, in my life, it's just felt so much like pulling this like exactness kind of, and like this, let's get it right with my intuition, like getting my intuition right and really trusting, not like my intuition's wrong, but you know what I'm saying? Like trusting my intuition and being one with it instead of fighting against it. Thank you so much. Um, okay, before we go on, I know some people are watching that are not really very familiar with Saturn at all. And I've talked about Saturn a lot over the past couple of days with my little Saturn series, but um, would you mind giving your take on Saturn, obviously Saturn's a planet. It's in our natal charts. Every person has their own natal Saturn. And so what is your overall take on the planet that is Saturn? Uh, my overall take is that um, Saturn is the law of obedience. Saturn is um, justice where Jupiter might be considered mercy. And, uh, and, and I think it's been, it can be difficult because a lot of times where people will feel like I have to do a lot to get a little bit. I feel like they're really stepping into like the shadow side of Saturn because Saturn can sometimes feel like I have to do ABC, like the whole alphabet before I can get any reward at all. But that's not really what Saturn is about. It's just about doing the right next step so that we don't like trip and fall and like road rash our face. Wow. Thank you for that. That's really interesting. I, my brain like caught on what you said about Saturn, the dark side of Saturn being that you feel like you're putting in all this work and like not getting the reward out. Cause I feel like that's totally true. And I hadn't thought about it in those terms because I know I have a lot of clients that do a lot of work and don't always see the rewards immediately. You know, they're saying, they're like, I'm putting in all this work. I've done all this stuff to improve myself. And why is my life still the way that it is? Why is my health still the way that it is? So an interesting idea that it could be tied to the expression of Saturn. And as we were talking about that, I thought of how Saturn, uh, I mean, it just demands mastery. And it inspires us and kind of forces us, whether we like it or not, to practice the same things over and over again until we get the desired outcome, whatever that is. And the thing about practice, well, you know, you're a musician, right? You yeah. can practice and practice and practice, but it can take many, many, many hours of practice before you see the result, right? Yeah. The changes can be extremely incremental until suddenly they're not. And like, suddenly you're an overnight success and suddenly <laughs> you're really good at what you do, but really you weren't really, you worked a little bit every single day and didn't see how good you were going to be until suddenly you did. Right. Yeah. I, I love that. And I just like, you're, you're saying these things and I'm like, but I 
I want it now, you know, like I want the whole, I don't know. I don't know if that's ever been your theme song. It's been my theme song a hot few times, but I think what a beautiful combination to have that, like that, like wanting to see it, but having to like constantly like doing the chin ups or doing the, like you're lifting your can of beans, you know, and feeling like you're not making any progress at all. And then have a combination of it in Pisces, because I feel like Pisces is this place where, where it's like, let me show you just a little bit. And so we can say to the Saturn in Pisces, like, I don't know, I feel like we could have a conversation with it and say, can you show me what doing five reps with these cans of beans, what is this doing? How is this helping me right now? What progress am I making right now? Like what benefits can I see right now? Because we don't want to wait to feel like we're making progress until like the end of the line, you know, <laughs> we want to feel, we want to feel like we're getting somewhere. And I think we can, it doesn't have to be like, we don't have to wait to see the progress until it's like huge. <laughs> Those are some really good looking glasses. Thanks. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Uh, there you go. Yeah, I I agree that I, I think that's part of human nature. And I think it's gotten very exaggerated in the microwave age of wanting things now. Because I think in the past, obviously, when people had to grow, you want to go play with snow? Go play with some snow. Um. Okay. In the past, everybody had to grow their own food. And so you obviously knew, like, I'm going to plant this seed in the winter and it's going to take almost a year before I see the results. And in, in some agrarian situations, it was much more pronounced even than that. I mean, I'm sure you've heard about like bamboo, you know yeah. how bamboo, like you have to water bamboo every day for five years before it will sprout. And then it will suddenly sprout and be like 70 feet by the end of the next week. Um, but you just have to be really diligent. And that's something that we don't have to do now. Like yeah. the average person in the developed world is not attuned to the natural cycles of sorry yeah this seed is gonna look dead for a long time and it's really actually very busy and working very hard but it's uh it's gonna look dead until suddenly it's not and then it's gonna take a long time if you want to grow a giant oak it's gonna take you some decades you know and yeah. it's hard when we do want the world, the whole world, and I want it now. <laughs> yes, and I think like if we can take this space where with Pisces or with Saturn being in Pisces, and we're like, okay, I am watering this bamboo all the time. What's really happening? Can you show me what's happening? Can you like allow me to see, even though I can't see the outward results, like I can't see the bamboo growing, I can't see the seeds sprouting. What what can I see? What progress is being made? And then we can kind of like lean into this trusting of that space, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's so true. So I would love to hear more about your take on Pisces specifically and the shifts that we might see over the next three years on an individual level when it comes to our own sense of intuition and that Saturnian mastery that, I don't know, what, what are your thoughts? Oh, I'm excited. I'm really excited. I read this book called Frequency. It's amazing. I don't know if you've read it. It's so, so good. She talks about us going from the space of being in this information stage. And like, that's where we were. We were super in the information stage and we're moving away from the information stage and we're moving into an intuition stage. And I really feel like so many people are moving into that space. And it's like really like whether you're connecting to God and you're really developing that foundational relationship with God, or you're developing that foundational relationship with your higher self or the universe or whatever that is. But we're now creating this space where it's not like a global like we're moving as a global towards that, but we're really creating that foundation for ourselves. Do you know what I mean? 
Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like, like that's what Saturn does. Saturn is just like, let's make a foundation so that when you get the blessings, it's there forever. And so it just lays the foundation. I love that because that's so true. I feel like Capricorn, Saturn rules Capricorn, and that is totally a Capricorn thing is the foundation. And like Capricorn and Cancer go together. Cancer is like your house built on the foundation of Capricorn. And so I love that Saturn as like the foundational enabler that allows us to build something solid that lasts. And this is a time, the next three years is going to be a time where we really get to dig into that for our intuition. Have you read the book Blink by Malcolm Gladwell? Uh, No, but I'm putting it on my list now. It's pretty good. I have not read it in a couple of years, but I've read it a few times because I liked it so much. I bought it right when it came out. I think I was in high school or something when it came out, Um, but I just loved it. And the whole premise of this book is about first impressions and how people's intuition is as or more effective than all sorts of things. He t- like one of the examples that's coming into my mind is of uh, an art guy who somebody brought in some piece of art and immediately this guy was like, that's a forgery. And they were like, whoa, dude, like you didn't even look at it. Like, take a look. It's so authentic. In the end, it did turn out to be a forgery. But as they like dug into the details and it got harder to tell sometimes and like, is it really a forgery? Is it not? Like, was that just me? judging inappropriately anyway the point is that our first impressions can actually be pretty accurate and so one thing that i've been thinking about just today i was reading up about um chat gpt and some of the like little disturbing stuff that's happening off in the world of ai right now and and how it is so hard to discern what is true like we live in the information age and we have so much access to I mean, like there's more information right here on your phone or on your computer than you could possibly read in your entire life. You know, you could read every second of the rest of your life and you couldn't get half of it into yourself and you wouldn't remember it. We have all of this access to information, but much of it is not true. And much of it, I mean, geez, what you you really have to be able to parse parse the facts and decide what they mean. I, I remember um, when, uh, sorry, when COVID was going on and there was a lot of discussion about should people get the thing that shall not be named or not. And I read this article about how um, people on both sides of the aisle were using the exact same data and drawing very different conclusions. You know, you can look at the same science and come to extremely different conclusions and that has always been true but now it's especially true in this age of so much opinion masquerading as science and um (laughs) she agrees with me she's an expert um anyway the ability to be able to trust our intuition in the Mm -hmm. face of knowledge that may not be true as we're inundated with more and more information that may have a dubious connection with truth this is going to be the only way that we're going to get through we have to be able to look at information and just immediately know in our soul like is this true is it true for me is this something i need to pursue we need to be able to make those choices in a split second based on our intuition um because there's just so much so much out there that it's going to become impossible to to tell what is true and what is not true yeah, absolutely. I love that because you you said some things that I, I've been saying so much. Like, you can find proof for whatever it is that you're saying. Anywhere. You can find it anywhere. And, it, like, it, it, we really can't be about that anymore. It really needs to be about stepping in to your intuition because I really think a lot of things are going to be shared. I mean, besides finding proof, a lot of things that are, are going to be shared, they're going to be presented as fact. And they're really just not fact. And so getting into this place where we, and which I think is the next three years is really going to be about getting into this place where I trust my intuition more than I trust whatever facts you're telling me. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's so true. That's going to be 
the real key. And, you know, as I'm talking about it, I'm thinking, I think people are going to move more and more into that direction, whether they realize it or not. And a lot of very logical people, I mean, you know, we all know people like this. We all have been people like this where we were like, oh, I reasoned through it. My my thoughts are sound, but like actually it was an emotional reaction that after the fact we assigned some little reasons to it to make it make sense. I think we're going to see a big uptick in emotional reactions to information that are intuition based sure. slash trauma based, right? Because sometimes our trauma can be a little indistinguishable from intuition. Yes. You have to heal your trauma if you want to be accurate in your assessment of your intuition. And most people haven't done the work. So they're going to be operating from trauma zone and thinking that it's their intuition, or maybe they're not even thinking that hard, but they're making these emotional judgments. And then after the fact saying, well, this is why it makes sense, you know, listing out the reason. Yeah. Yes. I like, I have seen this, I've experienced this. I've experienced it from obviously from the place of being in my own trauma and having a reaction. So there was a period of time where I, I set aside and I was like, I need to know the difference between truth, trauma, and um, um, what's that word? Um, like enticement, like so enticement to do the thing or enticement to be in that space. You know what I'm saying? Like temptation. So truth, trauma, or temptation. I needed to know the difference between the three. So I've been in that space. I totally understand that. And then as I healed from that, I was able to sit in this place where someone gave me specific counsel. And I was like, I hear them saying that. And I know like from my intuition that they're actually counseling me from a space of their own trauma. And so like this, to me, this is like the biggest of the big, because this, it isn't just for like um, textbook. This isn't just for media. This is for mentorship. This is for friendship. This is in marriage with our children. Like every relationship we have, if we are receiving what they're saying and we are first connected to our intuition, then we can be like, what they're speaking is truth. What they're speaking is trauma. What they're speaking is temptation. Like we can just dis decipher between the three. I love that. Oh my gosh. I like wrote it down. I think I'll call this video that Saturn in Pisces, truth, trauma, and temptation. <laughs> <It's so laughs> <adult>. <laughs> ah, but wow. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. My baby is sitting here. She's on the phone making a, an important <laughs> phone call over here. Sorry guys. Woo. Um, man, I want to go back to something that you mentioned earlier about the love that you felt from Saturn. Um, because when I, when you said that, I like heard in my mind, some people like rolling their eyes and just being like, oh, planets can't love you. But I think they can. And so I wanted to pull out some scriptural evidence. Okay. This is Abraham three. And this is the one where Abraham goes to God and um, he sees the stars that they are very great. And um, and God says to him, these are the governing ones right there. Bam. I love that. And I think about this all the time. The stars are the governing ones. And he goes through and uh, God teaches him about how the planets work and the reckoning of their time and how they work as a clock. And um, later on, he tells come on oh man this is like such an amazing chapter and everybody should read it but um at the end he tells him to go and teach oh, teach the people in egypt about it let's just find egypt uh there it is um that he says i'm teaching you all this before you go into egypt that you may declare all these words anyway that's i consider that one of the roots of all modern astronomical and astrological knowledge is this single conversation that Abraham has with God. And I just love that they are the governing ones. And when I think of that, I think of Job 38, seven, which talks about the morning stars singing together. And I just feel like, you know, you can argue that those things are symbolic, but I don't, I <laughs> <laughs> that they are right. I don't. <laughs> I bet Saturn does love you. I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like there is more to consciousness than 
what we are aware of. And in all of the work that I do, you know, as a healer and everything, I yeah. feel like I have seen for myself that um, the, the things that God has created often have a consciousness, even if it's not a living consciousness, like yeah. a rock can have a particular energy to it and feeling and power and people know this. Like, I think everybody knows this. I'm I'm in my living room looking at the mountain range right in front of my house. And like, people look at mountains and they know that something is special about them. People mm -hmm. go out into nature and they know that there is something special there. And I feel like it is the same thing with the stars. And I just think that Saturn does love you. And I think Saturn loves me. And I think Saturn loves everybody. And that's why Saturn totally kicks our trash. <laughs> <laughs> Like yes. in scripture, whom God loves, he chasteneth, right? The people that God loves, oh, wow. he corrects, right? Yeah, right, right, exactly. And you know, you're you're sharing all these things and about having consciousness. And, and the thing that I just kept hearing over and over is it's a medium for us to understand. Like all of these things in the world, the stars, rocks, the mountains, it's all a medium for us to understand. And so even if you don't necessarily like believe a planet is speaking to me, you can see it as a medium of understanding. Like people will see, oh, I just saw 111 or 222, like and numbers, you know, the numbers have a message. Maybe the numbers aren't actually speaking, but it's a medium for us to receive the information that we need to receive. And Saturn is the same. And any medium that we want to be re receiving information from, it is like love. The foundation is love, at least in my opinion. And I just want to say holla to the, to the planet singing. Yeah. I kind of look like, I mean, just like you know, everything that we have is evidence that God exists. Everything sings praises to him. And why then would he not be able to, we be able to receive those messages? Like if God were to be like, Seidel, you know, if he said the same thing that Saturn said, it might come through my ears in a different way. But if I'm receiving through that medium, it makes sometimes makes it easier to hear. I love that. Yeah. As you're saying that, I thought it's like a personality test. You know, that's why people love astrology. It's just like the ultimate personality test. You don't have to take any test. You just get to like see the picture of the night sky and there you go. But I don't know if you value, if you're an INFJ or an ESTQ or whatever those things, you know, Meyer Briggs, whatever, like, I don't know that these are all different ways of gathering information about mm -hmm your life and learning new ways to comprehend the interactions that you are experiencing in everyday life. And I feel like that's really the utility here is not to say that any of it has to be true. It's just, is it useful? You know, yeah. and that's, I feel like that's the, the way that I view all of my work. I'm not trying to tell anybody that the way I see the world is true, but I'm just saying, if this is a useful paradigm, like, then let's get all the use that we can out of it and make our lives make a little bit more sense and be a little bit happier. Preach, sister. Preach. <laughs> amen and amen. Uh, <laughs> I need more sense. <laughs> I want to feel, I feel like I'm doing things that that make my life easier and and make me more powerful, too. Yes. Well, thank you so much for being here, guys. If you don't know Seidel, I really recommend checking her out and I'll link to her below. Um, but I wanted to mention, she talked about the stars singing together for joy. And as soon as I read it out loud, I was like, oh my gosh, of course it's gonna come up when I'm talking to Seidel. If you guys don't know Seidel, she just has such a unique set of skills. She, when you sing, she can basically like hear what's going on in your spirit and like what's going on in your life and I don't know she's doing a whole lot of really interesting and really fun stuff with her very unique set of skills so I hope that you go check her out and uh thank you again Seidel for being here today this was such a delight thanks Allie it's been so fun yeah we'll see you guys later <laughs>